When it comes to troubleshooting the E82 error code on the Velocity Fryer, we can break this down into two troubleshooting scenarios. The first one with the error code coming up all the time or constantly, and the second one being if the error code is coming up intermittently, just from time to time. But before we dive into the troubleshooting, let's briefly talk about the logic involved behind the error code. The two components involved with the E82 error code are going to be our selector valve assembly and also our control board. The selector valve assembly will be located behind the left side side panel. The control board sends out a 24 volt DC power to the encoder motor through this top two pin connector here. After the selector valve encoder motor has received that 24 volts DC, it turns the motor and then sends a communication back up to the control board through this communication cable that's located right here at the bottom of the control board. If the control board does not see the proper feedback from the selector valve, this is when the error code is generated and all filtration activities will not be available. So for an error code coming up all the time, we, I talked about the 24 volts DC that's supplied to it. So this connector over here on the left hand side with the black and the red wire is our 24 volts DC supplied to the selector valve encoder motor. So this is where we would need to check for our voltage, if we turn the unit on and we don't hear that encoder motor turn, then this is where we would need to check our voltage. So what I like to do for testing purposes is anytime I need to check my 24 volts DC, I would go ahead and unplug this connector here and it just unplugs by squeezing those tabs and then pulling down. And then I would take my multimeter plug or test leads and put up here on the positive and the negative uh, terminals and check for 24 volts DC. And the way I could do it is have my meter leads in there and then just turn the power switch on on the fryer and then I should have my 24 volts DC there. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and you'll see what I mean by you should be able to hear the encoder motor turn once I turn this power switch on. So you can hear it did its two revolutions and then it stopped. So this is where, like I said, if we did not hear that encoder motor turn, then we could come right up here, unplug that, stick our test leads in there, and then uh, check for our 24 volts DC. If that's the case, if we have an encoder motor that is turning and it's getting its voltage, but we're still getting the error code constantly, then what we would need to do is we would need to check that communication cable connection at the back of the control board. Right here, this is that cable coming back up to it. So we want to make sure we have the unit powered down and we would actually want to unplug this connector and plug it back in. And what we're doing there is we're actually cleaning those contacts on the, all those pins that plug in there. Sometimes you can have uh, a loose connection there that could end up causing uh, the error code. So it's just a good habit to get into if you're ever running into this, whether it's an error code all the time or whether it's one that's intermittently, is have the unit powered down and just go ahead and unplug and plug back in your connections so that you can clean those contact points. So if that's the case, we have checked our connections. We know that our 24 volts DC is supplied. We can hear the encoder motor running. If that's the case, then this is gonna require an encoder motor replacement because as I mentioned, there's no other way to check that feedback coming out of this communication cable back up to the board. So in that event, we would have to assume that this encoder motor is bad, even though it's turning um, and we have our power supplied to it, if we're still constantly getting that error code and we've checked our connections, then we would have to proceed with replacing that. One thing that we wanna do keep in mind before we leave the store and before we order this encoder motor is before we leave, we need to take that eighth of an inch hex key wrench, unbolt this encoder motor from the valve, and we need to check for any oil leakage on the inside there. The reason that's important is because if we don't, and we come back to replace this encoder motor that we were positive was bad, and we go ahead and take it off to replace it, and then we find oil leaking inside there, 
then we're gonna run into another trip for the customer because now we have to order this whole assembly, we have to take pictures and get tech support approval. So I highly recommend if you find that one of these is bad, locked up, or um, like the checks that we had just made, before you leave the store, take those three hex key bolts off, separate it, and check for any oil leakage. This could help save you from running into an additional trip. So the other thing that could happen there, um, another scenario is sometimes you'll find that this encoder motor would be locked up for whatever reason. Sometimes the valve will lock up from oil leakage or sometimes the motor itself will lock up. So what would happen there is we would have our 24 volts DC supplied up here, but we just wouldn't hear our motor turning or anything. So that's another scenario you could run into. With the air code coming up intermittently, we first need to check all of our electrical connections and see if the problem persists. So as I had mentioned, we need to take and unplug this supply voltage connector and plug it back in. And then we need to unplug and plug our communication cable in at the control board, clean all those contacts. And then we need to see if the problem persists. The second thing we need to do for an intermittent problem, if that if it continues to persist is once again, we need to separate this encoder motor from the valve body and see if we have any oil leakage in there. If we have oil leakage, like I mentioned, that oil can get on that sensor inside there and it could cause some intermittent issues there. So that's the second item to keep in mind. The third item to keep in mind would be at our control board here. I'm gonna show you how to go into tech mode. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna check the parameters of that encoder motor. So I'm gonna show you two different things here. So we'll press and hold our menu button here to get into our main menu. And then we need to go into programming, which is not on this first page. So we're gonna tap the menu button again. Now we can see number four is our programming. So I'm gonna hit that. Again, I'm looking for tech mode. It's not on my first page there, so I have to scroll through. I'm gonna hit number seven for tech mode. And now I'm gonna enter the tech mode code, which is 1122, 1122. So now I'm gonna scroll over. To and this is what I was wanting to show you as far as intermittent issues. This is a good tip to come in here and check the three port locations and make sure they're where they need to be. So if we go to P1, that should take us to about three, 333 is the correct number. Now, since we were in the previous menu and we stopped on 001, you can see that it didn't land perfectly on 333. Now, if we have a number that's very far off from 333, that's something we need to keep in consideration when it comes to those intermittent issues. We could have some faulty sensors on the inside of the encoder motor. So now if I hit P2, it's gonna to go to 666, which in this one, it went to 667. So P1 is gonna be 333, P2 is gonna be 666, and then P0 should be either 999 or triple zero. And again, since we stopped at an oddball location, it went one sensor past, not a big deal. But if we see this reading um, like in the five to 10 range off from where it's supposed to be, then we might wanna consider replacing that encoder motor, especially once again, if we're getting that intermittent issue to prevent less trips from going back and forth to the store. So this is a handy tool to use in tech mode to be able to scroll through those different uh, port locations on the encoder motor and get your sensor reading. So you can see when breaking this down into the two troubleshooting scenarios that we had mentioned, it'll make troubleshooting this in the field much easier.